Back at camp, Gordon starts to sort through the thousands of pictures captured by the remote cameras. The thing about this system is you can't review it in the field, so it's quite exciting. There's a kind of like Christmas morning moment. You come back with this little uh, memory card, put it in the computer, and then you find out exactly what you've got. Sometimes it's a pair of socks, and sometimes it's a Skeletrix. Hang on. Hmm. At first, it looks like socks. Any movement triggers the camera. One of the curiosities of New Guinea is there are hardly any large mammals living on the jungle floor. Rat. You've got giant rats here, rats that are bigger than domestic cats. The last camera trap to check is from the tunnel entrance. Another rat, I think that's a different species. Hmm. Then, something very special. One of the most secretive creatures in New Guinea. Look, that is a cuscus. I knew it, look, look, look. I do not believe that. He's just having a good old route around. These images were taken at five in the morning. Cuscus are only active at night. This one's returning to the cave where it must spend the day. Oh, goodness me, I would absolutely have loved to have been there. It's an important find for the team. Cuscus are so shy they're rarely seen. At dusk, Gordon heads out to try and capture one on camera. During the day, they'll either be asleep in the trees, um, and more often than not, they'll be in a hole. So whether that's a hole in a tree, a hole in the ground, or underneath these big boulders, I've got lots of different camera systems that we can pretty much check out every option at night time and try and get some shots of them. At the waterfall, Steve's putting his skills as a climber to good use. He's leading the way up. An old rope has been left by the previous expedition. It feels pretty dead. And it's been, uh, been battered by the waterfall for the last two years, so I can't really afford to risk my life on it. The camera is attached to Steve's helmet. All I can see is spray. It's now pitch black, and Gordon is pushing into unknown territory. To find and film the elusive couscous, who we'll use only infrared light. Got lots of noise up at the top of this tree. Not the couscous, the giant fruit bats. We've got these fruit bats feeding on figs. <laughs> it's a long way up. You can see the way that they're using the um, wings the claws to clamber about in the treetops. Because he's using infrared light, the bats are completely undisturbed. Oh, look at the squabbling. Oh, oh, fight, fight. There's two fighting there. It's amazing that there's actually fisty cuffs up there. You'd think there'd be enough to go around, but evidently not. Everyone's just defending their little patch of figs. Oh, look, he's just testing with his mouth to see how right that is. But 
what these bats have that I haven't seen on other fruit bats is this enormous um, thumb, this big hook. And they're using those hooks to clamber about in the treetops. Incredibly agile. These are key animals in the ecology of the rainforest, feeding on fruit and dispersing the seeds up to 30 miles away. It does mean filming them has its downsides. I was thinking that a, a fig on the head was the worst thing that we could get, but I think probably bat pee is a bit worse. <laughs> oh, pig! Seems that figs have the same effect on fruit bats as they do in humans. At last, Steve has made it up the jagged rocks of the waterfall. That's what I guess. Water sodden team haul themselves up. At the top of the falls, they start the painstaking work of mapping the underground river. Lasers measure to a millimetre the size of the ancient chamber. Then it's on again. They must find a place to sleep before they get exhausted. Oh, it's cold. 